Hi, everybody. I am Dr. Bill Oxier, a award-winning, best-selling author, a speaker, a professor, uh, an all-around expert on leadership when it comes to rural health care, because that's my passion. Uh, for those of you who know me through the National Rural Health Association, I'm the program director for the CEO certification program. And you also may know me from my podcast called Rural Health Leadership Radio. Today, I'm here to talk to you about leadership. I'm here to share a formula and give you a tool that you can use to be a more effective leader. And so I created a formula for leadership and it's quite simple. It's L equals S O L equals S O. What does that stand for? That stands for leadership and effective leadership equals serving oneself. Leadership equals serving oneself. Now, some of you uh, I know are focused on serving others, right? Uh, every rural health leader that I've ever met, uh, many embrace the philosophy of servant leadership, serving others, and uh, all are focused on serving others, whether you embrace servant leadership or not, serving and taking care of your employees, your providers, your patients, the uh, people in your community, and that's fantastic and that's essential. Uh, but too often we ignore ourselves. And I know that this isn't a new concept to you because if you've ever flown on a commercial airline in the pre-takeoff safety talk, they always talk about it with the oxygen masks come down from the ceiling, put one on yourself first before helping others. So why do they tell you to do that? Because if you don't put the mask on yourself and you're busy helping others, you could pass out and then you can't help anyone and people gotta take care of you. So it's important to take care of yourself. And this all goes back to uh, the rural health leadership uh, model that I created years ago. Uh, and at the base of the uh, rural health leadership model that forms your philosophical foundation as a leader, it's called, I call it intrapersonal leadership, which is the leadership of self. And that does form your philosophical foundation of leadership, how you lead yourself. If you can't lead yourself, how are you gonna lead somebody else? So L equals SO, leadership equals serving oneself, is an important element of effective leadership. Now, when I work with leaders uh, and, and we talk about uh, serving oneself or the concept of leadership of self, one of the key things that we focus in on are core values. So my question to you is, what are your core values? How do you get core values? A lot of times leaders don't like taking the time to look at what their core values are because it takes time out from the busy day-to-day -day operations and it takes reflective thought and everything. But if I ask you what your core values are, why they are your core values and how did they become your core values, uh, it can be take a lot of reflective thinking. So here's my free tool for you. I say it's free, it does require require a piece of blank paper and a pen. I'm assuming most of you have those. That's why I'm saying it's free. And so what I want you to do on this blank piece of paper is create four columns. So on the first column on the left side of the page, I want you to write down core value. In the second column, write down person, belief, experience. In the third column, write down importance. And in the fourth column, walk the talk. So under the core value, you list core values, write down some of your core values. And then next to that core value, write down the person or the belief or the experience you have that causes that to be a core value of yours. And then on a scale of one to 10, one being not valuable, 10 being highly valuable, uh, write down your score and then score yourself. How well are you walking the talk? So for example, honesty is a huge, hugely important core value of mine. And the person who influenced that is Abraham Lincoln. Now, believe it or not, I've never met Abraham Lincoln, but as a kid growing up in Southern Illinois, the land of Lincoln, I always loved the stories about Honest Abe. So I rank honesty as a 10 on the importance scale, and I give myself a nine on walking the talk. Another core value I have is, or I used to have, is the golden rule. I grew up as a kid in a Christian family and we were taught the golden rule was, well, <laughs> just that, the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have do, them do unto you. And, you know, most major religions uh, have a similar guideline or rule or philosophy. And so golden rule is my core value. 
it was because of my Christian belief. I give that a 10 on the importance scale, and I give myself an eight on the walk the talk. Maybe I'm being generous there. But then I met Marshall Goldsmith. If you don't know who Marshall is, Google him. He's one of the top thinkers on leadership in the world. And Marshall taught me that the golden rule doesn't apply when it comes to leadership. He wants you to use the platinum rule. If you think about it, if you're a leader, how many people in your department spend the hours that you spend taking the time to do the extra reports or coming in on the holidays and weekends and stuff? I'm guessing that it's probably mainly you. So if you treat those people the same way you want to be treated, they may not like that. And the platinum rule is all about treating others the way they want to be treated. So uh, that's the platinum rule. It's a combination of Christian beliefs and Marshall Goldsmith, a person. And I give myself, it's important. So I give it a 10 and I'm maybe generous on the walk in the talk at eight. Once you do that, ask yourself, are my core values still relevant? Because as I found out with the golden rule, maybe it's not. And how am I doing living my core beliefs? In summary, my, my formula to you is L equals SO, leadership equals serving oneself. And I've given you a tool that you can use to write down your core values and ask yourself, are they still relevant? And how am I living my core beliefs?